Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today we do this Hannah Louise Post and Inspired makeup look in honor of the box that she sent me. So if that sounds interesting to you, please keep on watching. We're getting into it right now. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today we've got a very, very juicy video. I received a box from the Hannah Louise Poston in mine, mine very own apartment complex. Whew, I am shaking. I was super excited. I got this in the mail yesterday and I was going to do an unboxing on camera, but I figured I don't have the patience with all to do that. So I did open everything up. I dug into it, but today we are going to do a get ready with me. In the style of Hannah Louise Poston, we're going to do her signature look. I'm going to recreate as faithfully as possible what I can do. Um, before we get started, I do want to show you guys just what is in here because I am super freaking hype. Let's jump into it. All right, so basically I already took everything out of its container, <laughs> so I'm just going to pull things out because I had to take out the recycling. Um, the first thing I have is the Am Amica, Amica Perk Up Dry Shampoo, and it says Tester on here, so I don't know if this was released yet. I don't know if this is like an early release. Um, it's sealed all around so it looks like Hannah hasn't even dug into it yet. But this is super exciting because I love dry shampoo. Dry shampoo is something that I use frequently as someone who doesn't wash her hair more than once a week. I do need it just at the roots for some extra volume. Actually, why don't we just try this out now? It revives excess oil, buildup, odor. Yeah, it's basically just a dry shampoo. Let's see. Yep, my hair smells really good. I feel like it gave my hair a little bit of volume. And Amigo hair products are always really, really nice. I usually buy mine at TJ Maxx or Marshalls because I'm cheap. There you go. These are the Alter Ego brushes that she hauled recently, and I actually took them out and started using them already. They are pretty soft. I will give a more thorough review slash first impressions as I use them, but I did use them yesterday. I've got this Venix Organics um, Diamond Glow Melted Highlighter. The shade is in K color. It's basically just a glowy cream pot of highlighting fluid slash cream. It's really nice. I thought it was going to be very, very greasy and emollient based on what I believe she described. I think she said it was basically a bunch of oils and pigment put together. So I thought it was going to be very, very sticky, greasy, smudgy, slimy, and yucky. <laughs> no offense, um, Venix Organic, but it ended up being really, really nice and cosmetically elegant. So I actually do like this product. It has a little bit of like a, a more powdery texture than I thought it was going to have as a oil-based cream product. It's really nice. I will definitely use this today all over my eyes and my cheeks, and you will see this in action. And the next thing I have here is a toothpaste. Super cool. This is the Dr. Ginger's Coconut Oil Toothpaste, and I remember on the box it said, oil pulling for the rest of us, and I thought that was so cute and funny because, yeah, oil pulling is this really ancient uh, tradition, I believe, from India, and it's really good for you, but it's, like, really uncomfortable. I actually tried it for a while because I wanted to make it part of my routine, but oil pulling is gross. Like, you shove a spoonful of oil in your mouth and you swish for, like, 20 minutes to basically use, like, osmosis to pull out stuff from your insides. And, yeah, it sounds all well and good, but, like, swishing thick olive oil or coconut oil around in your mouth, it's just unpleasant. And so um, when they said oil pulling for the rest of us, I was pretty down for this. And also it's got this old timey metal toothpaste tube, which I love the aesthetic of. So definitely we'll try this out. Oral care is one of my soft spots. I love oral care. Um, next, I've got this K-Beauty item. This is the Medicube Triple Collagen Serum. Now, Medicube is a brand that is definitely on my radar because remember they came out with that, I don't know, it looked like a Swiss Army uh, patch <laughs> and it was a cube. It was the Medicube Cushion Compact and it was supposed to be like the most high coverage, the most acne um, treatment product, blah, 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 blah. But this basically just looks like a serum slash moisturizer. We'll try this out. We'll see how this is. Um, and then I've got this thing from, I think this is Chaz Dean. Yeah, Bella Spirit by Chaz Dean. This is the Restorative Night Cream. It has lavender, cucumber, and eucalyptus, and it says just apply at night, um, and it basically is a thick nighttime moisturizer, and it comes with an airless pump, so that's really nice. I took a really, really tiny amount of this just to see what it's like. It's very thick, very thick. It's stiff. It's like stiff peaks, you know, holds its own. And yeah, it's definitely really emollient. It's really thick and creamy, and of course it does have that like cucumber manly skincare scent, but it feels a little bit like the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, like how it's got that kind of oily moisture. And I don't mean oily in a bad way, I mean oily in a nourishing way that still feels cosmetically elegant. So I really look forward to using this either at nighttime or under makeup. 
This is fun. I have a Derma E Vitamin C Moisturizer. Now, Derma E is a brand that I have been turned on to because of Hannah. I feel like she talks about Derma E being wonderful um, from an ingredient standpoint, from a, a brand standpoint. She knows the folks there. And so I'm really excited to try this. I've actually never tried anything from Derma E. I do know that they're starting to send out PR to other folks. They also have like a, what might be a dupe, I think, of the Drunk Elephant. Sukari Baby Facial. It's like a overnight chemical peel, and I'm interested in that. We'll try this out. We'll see how it works. All right, so I have my um, doubts that this pump works right now. Let me just check to see that everything is... I mean, it's a glass container, so this will be easy to recycle, which is nice. Everything comes apart. All right, let's just see what this is like. I took it out because I don't know that the pump is working. Ooh, okay. Really light and moisturizing. Definitely not like a thick, thick moisturizer. It has a very, very, mm, yeah, this reminds me of Thailand. <laughs> very, very weird. Back when I visited Thailand, I've been to Thailand twice, and they have like all kinds of moisturizers and lotions that you can use to get rid of bugs, and it has that same smell. I wish I kept the box. Oh man, that's super nostalgic for me. Like, not in a bad way. I don't mean it in like a, a terrible way. I don't think it's like the citronella smell. It's something else. It might be like lemongrass or something like that. All right, so in here, we've got a couple of other products. Um, we have the Coke and Dough Makeup Base. This is the My Funchy Green Color Base, and I love this thing. I have tried it yesterday, and basically it is a very, very pale green color corrector, and I know Hannah likes hers a little bit more pigmented, but I actually really like how mm, not green this is. It's just a tint of green, and as you can see, my skin is very, very pink, and so I'm going to try this on today, and we'll see how much of that greenness actually helps cancel out some of the redness in my skin, because it's not like I'm pure bright red. I watched a couple videos on color correcting recently by a makeup artist that I found. I'll put her information down below. She's incredible. I think she is a, I think she's a cinema makeup artist, so she works on TV sets and stuff like that. She talks about how we color correct incorrectly. Wow, my hair is stuck in my earring. Um, anyway, she was saying that a lot of us over color correct, and then we have to go in with like a high coverage product. And so I have high hopes that this is not going to over color correct. All right, next in here, I have an Ofra blush. Now, this is super cute. I don't know if anyone knew that the Ofra brushes were so small and cute, but it looks like this. It's like a large eyeshadow compact almost, and this is in the color Rendezvous, and it's just a pretty blushy terracotta color. This is actually kind of dark, but I am excited to try it out on the skin. Let's see what it looks like when I have it on a brush. Yeah, it definitely is super blendable because I put it on my hand and it doesn't look that dark and I could definitely build this up. It looks really scary in the pan, but it's not so scary on the cheeks. I think this is super pretty. This reminds me of Faded Clementine by M Cosmetics just from looking at it. I, I've never actually seen Faded Clementine in person, but I have an impression that this is kind of the same juicy orange rusty fall vibe. So super, super stoked for this, especially when the seasons change. Next, I have the um, Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I think Kelly Gooch was the one who turned me on to this. Someone really likes this product and recommends it, so I'm going to try this one as well. This is a really exciting product. This is the Freck Freckle Pen. I hope this is a sample size because this is really very devastatingly small if it's a full size product, but it's basically like a liquid liner pen and you guys have seen the, the Freck products. It's just like, it's like this. And um, you're gonna put it on, you dab it out, and I am super stoked because I've wanted a Freckle Pen for a really long time, but they're kind of, again, lower on the list of priorities for me right now. So this is well received. Remember when I said that uh, lashes were coming? I really need to do a proper deep dive on these lashes. I almost don't even want to use them today because these lashes are something special, you guys. I talk about how um, my favorite lashes ever of all time are the Ardell Naked Lashes because they give a false lash extension effect. They really have almost several layers of lashes so that way when you turn to the side, you don't see your lash is the then fake lashes. It's like so fluffy and layered um, and yet wispy enough that it doesn't look dramatic and fake and, you know, I mean, of course it looks fake, but it doesn't look so dramatic that it's overwhelming that you just have like this curtain on your eyes, but it does look fluffy enough that it could ostensibly be lash extensions. You know how lash extensions, they go through painstakingly one by one adding hairs onto the layers of your lashes, right? And our lashes grow in like a layer of three or four, so when you do lash extensions, it has that naturally fluffy layered effect. And you know, natural lash extensions can look like a, a curtain on the eyes, but usually they look much more natural than really, really thick, wide, long, um, strip lashes. And so I was super, super stoked when I found out that the strip lashes from Alter Ego have the same 3D lash effect. 
but they don't have that really obnoxious thick curtain on the eyes look at least from first glance I feel like these are the kinds of lashes that are perfect for me like <laughs> if I were to design a lash brand it would be something like this like the 3d fluffy fluffy delicious curly lashes that are layered and voluminous and wonderful so this is incredible I have so many juicy pairs here I feel so spoiled for choice like um oh man part of me is like trying to do the math to see how much the value of all these products is like I feel like this is the most generous gift last but not least the creme de la creme people who are fans of Hannah who have come to my channel will die will gasp out loud when they see what I have received I have received the iconic Kevin Aquan new pop palette as well as the Alter Ego Sahara palette. So these are two very, very iconic palettes from her collection, the Nude Pop even more so. And I'll, I'll show you, we had a little bit of a casualty um, and it's not too bad. I didn't have the time to clean it up, but we have a little bit of a casualty with guess, this guy. I had to press her back in, but these shades are so stunning, like more stunning than I could have ever imagined in person. You can see this one genuinely looks like those sequined pillows, right? You see so much texture and dimension. At first I thought, there was maybe something wrong with the eyeshadows. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. Why is it like, like, why is it two different colors? Because how do I describe this? Okay, let me just come up to you. Do you see that orange shade? And do you see how the brown bits change every time I wipe? Doesn't it remind you of those sequin pillows that you can push back and forth and it like changes the design because the sequin is double-sided and so they stitch them on in a way that you can get a message on each side. I will find a picture and put it up here what I mean, but I felt that way about this eyeshadow and I was like, that's so weird. But I think that is just that ultra, ultra refined, ultra textured shimmer formula that more and more brands are coming out with. I just, I don't buy enough eyeshadow <laughs> to be on it with all those new trends, but there's three of those really, really special shades in here. There's a bunch of surprising satins that are very, very exquisite. Once you dig them in and, and put them on the eyes and buff them out, they're very surprising. And of course, the Sahara palette, which is the Natasha Denona Biba dupe, this one feels really robust. And there's something about the build quality of the Alter Ego palette that is really, really quite nice. It feels like a legitimate, like this feels like my Ofra palette, like really sturdy and nice, much better than ColourPop's build. I'm looking over there, much better than my Lime Crime palettes or my Nomad Cosmetics. Like it feels really, really thick and robust. Um, I would say even more thick and robust than Anastasia products because they tend to be very lightweight. So the first thing that struck me was the build quality um, and then the beautiful colors on the inside. But this is very much so up my standard wheelhouse and I feel so grateful that she thought of this being suitable for me and my coloring and stuff like that. But the <laughs> nude pop thing I think is what I'm most excited about. One, because it's iconic and two, because it one strikes me as something my sister would really like. Um, not that I'm giving this to her because <laughs> she wouldn't appreciate it, but it pushes me just a little bit outside of my comfort zone in terms of what I would traditionally do, but it is thoughtful and appropriate enough as a gift because I know how much she loved this palette and I know how much this meant to her and she certainly did pass on to someone who received it well and is going to give it a loving home. Thank you, thank you, Hannah, for this haul. It has been just the most wonderful gift. I know I had a whole bunch of videos scheduled to go up, but this was an emergency. I had to have this up immediately. So here we are. So the other day, I was going through the small YouTuber tag made by Smokey Glow, who is also Hannah, but different Hannah. And I was watching people's responses to that tag video. I don't have the green color corrector on if you guys are wondering why my face is this color. <laughs> um, and I was going through the responses to that video, and Hannah did one, and she said, I have this dream of working with Kimberly Clark in many ways. I could say that the reason why I started my channel is so one day I have a chance at, you know, communicating with or collaborating with whatever, like exchanging communication with Kimberly Clark. And that would that's like kind of far-fetched and I would never actually imagine it would happen, but you know, if we're gonna put everything out in the universe, that is how I feel. And <laughs> when I read that, um, it was like, oh gosh, like that's um that's Hannah for me. I mean, I of course have talked about how I've been on YouTube for like 10 years now, like beauty YouTube for 10 years now, and how um, it's super important that I, I stumbled across her content because something about her content shifted the way that I saw makeup. It became less about, you know, wanting to appease others, wanting to do things because others find it, you know, appropriate or wanting to be the next best thing. And of course, like, you know, as you age, um, those feelings kind of fade a little bit. Like you're more secure in yourself. You're, you're, you're trying less and less to impress others. And by the time I graduated high school, I was not doing things for other people. But of course, like, you know, you want to follow the trends. You want to do like at least what is not, um, 
seen as like you being a social pariah, right? So I was still very much so um, enraptured by things that were trendy or things that were cool by the standards of others. And then here comes Hannah being like the cool bad B that she is. And just something about her hit different. And you know, after her first no buy year, the whole saga, I was like, you know what? Maybe I will start my YouTube channel and I'll do something along the lines of me trying to be a new individualized version of myself. You know, seeing her growth was super inspiring, seeing how many people followed along her journey, hearing her poetic voice and having um, the ability to draw in a crowd like, you know, I, I, I b before seeing Hannah on YouTube, people just felt very non-literary i don't know how else to say this like you know there there are there are few writers on youtube who speak the way that she does and have the following that she does you know and so i always thought that to be on youtube you have to be short spoken you have to have like this really like jake paul personality that is you know fast and bubbly and everyone just like your squirrel attention span can latch onto and hold on to that kind of person because that's what people tell you they tell you that you know folks have the attention span of seven minutes right nowadays it's only going to get worse. Um, and I'm not that kind of person. I can focus in on something for hours and hours and hours. I have that like, you know, that, that flow mind state pretty often. And so I was really excited to find a YouTuber who could speak at length with such prose, right? Like her, her language is so beautiful because she's a writer, right? And um, it was just, it was really awesome to see that. And eventually I realized that she slowly, slowly, slowly became a YouTuber that I watched every single video of. And I liked her content. Even when she wasn't producing something that was suitable for me, I was tuning in. I was excited to see what she was going to say because her personality, her way of speaking, her mannerisms, her thoughtfulness, that was mind-boggling to me that you could be so badass. <laughs> and so to me, Hannah is my Kimberly Clark. Um, <laughs> and so I guess Kimberly Clark is like my godmother, right? Because she inspired Hannah. And I love Kimberly. Kimberly's channel, I think, has um, been temporarily shut down for a while because I think I don't know, well, there's like other projects going on so unfortunately I can't go back and reference Kimberly Clark's videos but I do know that she did the what I'm not gonna buy anti hauls and those were iconic in their own way right they started a whole trend of anti hauls what an icon um, just got reminiscing on YouTube is so weird like what a weird, crazy turn of events this has been. I don't know where I'm going to be in a year from now, not even a month from now. I mean, gosh, I started my YouTube channel at the tail end of June, and it is now the first week of, or maybe the second, we're, we're approaching the second week of August. And, um, you know, the fact is I'm almost at 700 subscribers. That is cuckoo bananas. And all of you guys are, for the most part, I think, coming from Hannah's channel. Let me know if you are a subscriber who is watching this and you have not watched Hannah Louise Poston because I feel like it will be three or four of you and also go immediately watch her channel. She is an icon. She is my personal hero. And if you're watching this, I'm sorry if I have put too much pressure on you. Of course, I have other heroes in my life, but it's just, it's crazy. I, I just like, I didn't, I didn't think that um, life would unfold in this way. It's weird. It's super weird. She like likes my posts on Instagram and that is crazy to me. I feel like in many ways, it was crazy to me the first day it happened, and then all of a sudden, it kind of became normal. Like, I would check out my Instagram and be like, oh, like, Hannah liked my Instagram post, or Hannah commented on my Instagram post, and I have to, like, pinch myself once in a while because I feel like I got a little bit too familiar with the idea of that, and it's weird that that's even happening, but I'm going in with this uh, balmy thing. I'm going to do it all across my cheeks. We're trying the gloss all across method today of the cheeks. I don't know why I said it like that. Of course, I applied a foundation, which she doesn't really do unless there's like an event. But I wear foundation every day because my skin is garbage. My skin's not garbage, I guess. My skin is just blotchy and red and uneven. And it looks much better when I cover it with foundation. So that's what I like to do. And this is what I mean by this product is not as sticky as I thought it was going to be. It's pretty stiff. And that's actually quite nice for someone who has oily skin, who feels like they don't want like a ton of grease and maybe I'm wrong maybe this is a completely different product from what she was describing earlier but yeah I'm rubbing it onto the skin it's pretty lovely you can see just how gorgeous and beaming that is I feel like it's more gorgeous and beaming on camera in person it doesn't look that bright and shiny so we're just gonna go with it I'm gonna assume that this gloss all across look is appropriate and fine 
I'm going to now go in with this Ofra shade in Rendezvous. Pardon me if my pronunciation is absolutely atrocious. Oh, before we do that, I'm going to go in with this freckle pen. I don't think Hannah particularly loves faux freckles, but I'm going to try. I've never used this product before. It's got this uh, gelatinous texture, so that's interesting. And I guess I'm just going to... Boop, 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 boop. I don't know, do you just tap it in? I don't know that this is working that well. Pushing this product into the skin, you can see the dots. Okay, now I see the freckles coming out. I think you definitely have to press kind of firmly to get that freckle look. It kind of doesn't look like freckles, it just looks like I've got spots on my face. Um, hmm. But it is very blendable, which is cute. Actually, okay, here it is. Can you see the frecks? Like, can you see the freckles? I'm trying to do individual spots. I wish the tip of this product was not a brush, but like a stencil. So we could actually have like freckle shaped freckles. I, I feel like right now I've got weird like commas. All right, so we've got the freckles. I think they are, they've showed up. Oh, that looks really natural. Okay, I see now why people buy this product, but if it is this small and this expensive, I don't think it'll be worth it because I had to use so much to get this freckly look. I'm gonna add in some of this rendezvous blush. I keep saying rendezvous as if that's how French sounds. Um, how does Hannah do her blush? I feel like she does like a blush drapey thing. Let's do her blush draping. Uh, I'm taking my Sona G Inoshige brush. It's one of my favorite and I'm going along the temple. So this line because I'm doing her blush drapey look. I don't think she usually combines all of these looks together. All right, I'm going into the temples, blush draping, hitting the high points of my cheekbone, using a rusty color, all things that are I think up her alley. And I don't think she would combine that with a rusty, dusty, <laughs> nude pop um, eyeshadow look, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to use my new Alter Ego brushes just to show you guys how they work. I'm going to go into that first shade that has unfortunately been shattered, but you know what? By the looks of it, it's still totally fine. Oh, actually, she's very powdery. I might repress this. But at the same time, of all the shades to have shattered, this one is not the most important all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start blending in with a taupe color. So either this one or this one. I might do a mix of all three of those taupey colors. Oh, do we see the pigment that just graced us? All right, and Hannah's looks are usually pretty smoky and blown out. So I'm going to go in like a wide shape. Wide. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take one of the flat shader brushes. This is the brush number six. I'm going to take the same color and go underneath the lash line. So I have this pimple <laughs> right here on my eyes, and it is making me very sad and very uncomfortable. But alas, um, I guess she will just be staying here until she goes away. Also, I forgot to mention, these shades are really, really nice. They're blending really well. Um, no patchiness. No, nothing really quite silky and even though these aren't like my colors I don't find any trouble in using them like figuring out how to use them because they're super nice I'm gonna go in with um, brush number five now this is a slightly fluffier but still flat shader brush I'm gonna go into this shade at the very end this is called mural and this one is the one that is really quite special it doesn't look very special in the uh, pan but on the eyes it is super extraordinary First of all, do we see how far that pigmentation went? Do you die? I die. I am really carving out that outer corner, giving my hooded eyes that shape, right? That sculptural shape that we're looking for. All right, without blending, I am going to add in a little bit of the copper shade. That is this one right here. She's a standout. She's a beaut. And you can definitely use your fingers. I did. Um, but with the brush, it's also really, really nice. Do you see that? It's so creepy. I think all the little like crumbly bits just like fold into themselves and turn into like a thick paste. It reminds me of the Rowan shades. If the Rowan shades could be turned into like, here, let me show you something. 
Can you see this? Is there enough light? If I squish this enough, it turns into like a paste. It's crazy. I don't know what is up with this eyeshadow, but this thing is some kind of insane cream powder formula. Like literally, if I smush enough, it it smushes down into like a paste. And it reminds me of the Rowan shades, like with just how reflective and creamy they are on the eyes. Does that not look like Rowan 75 degrees warm? It does, right? Alright, so we're going to put that in the inner corner. I don't know that I've ever seen Hannah mix copper and purple together like this. I feel like she usually does these looks separately, but I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe my memory has deceived me somehow. For viewers of Hannah, who are some of your other favorite YouTube channels to watch? I'm so curious to see what our mutual viewers like to see and to see if I don't follow any of them. I'm sure I do follow. <laughs> a lot of those suggestions just because I have spent a lot of time on YouTube, um, you know, especially being at home during quarantine and trying to clean up the house. YouTube is just about all I do all day long. It's not healthy. <laughs> I'm taking the pink shade and I'm going to go down to the lower lash line with it, but you know what? It's not really registering as pink because the copper is so you know, bright, it kind of just looks like an offshoot of the copper shade, and that's okay, I'm not really upset about that. In the inner corner, I'm going to go in with, uh, I guess the other side of this brush, and I'm going to use that white shade that we used just to brighten up the inner corner. Cute. Um, I'm now going to take a bullet brush, this is the number 7, and I'm going to go into that really, really dark matte shade here. It's Again, it is matte, yes, it's matte. This is the shade Sculpt. Oh, how perfect, and I'm going to sculpt out my eyes. I am pouncing in the outer corner, really deep darkening that outer corner shade. Yes, sis, give us everything. This is incredible. I think this like really dramatic eye is kind of cute. I'm kind of here for it, even though I never do it myself. All right, I did a dramatic eye. Somehow it doesn't look like anything that she's ever done. I thought I knew Hannah. I thought I knew her style. And yet, there's something about this that is not correct. And I don't know what it is. I'm doing this wrong. Um, hmm, it might be because I've pulled it up too high and she's not necessarily about that life. Let me see if I can darken that outer corner just more broadly. All right, we've reached the point at which I have run out of ideas. I'm just going to add a little bit of liner. Of course, not winged liner. I'm just going to line the upper lash line. This is the Milani liner. This is the only one I have on me right now. Here we are. Um, her lower lash line. Oh, maybe I should have made this a little bit darker on the lower lash line. To fill in my brows, uh, yesterday I used a mix of browns in this shade. I used Camel, Clay, Raven, all of the, like, I just dipped into um, here, here, and here. Just kind of blending all of those random shades together. I have a weird brow situation right now. It's not blonde. It's not black. It's not taupe. I just, I don't know what's going on here. But my hairs are bleached, so they pretty much take on any color that you shove in there. So I'm not too impressed about what exactly my brows look like. I feel like people are so particular about their brows and here I am basically being like, mm -hmm, whatever works. Maybe I should make them like bushier and bigger. They're too short. I trim my brows. Um, like I pull them, I brush them up and I, I trim them. So they're definitely not going to be that fluffy, beautiful, luscious monster brow um, that I want to have. All right, let me see what I can do about the lashes. Um, mm -hmm. I know she doesn't usually wear lashes, but Hannah has more eyelashes than I do, so I feel like I can't do nothing, and I do want to wear a pair of lashes from her kit, and I do also want to put a little bit of mascara on them. I know it's, like, not uh, allowed in the eyelash community, but I feel like it would it would be insincere to do a look without very, very clumpy, mascara up lashes. So this is in the look royal. These feel almost a little bit too small. All right, these do feel really small, but they are the only lashes that I feel like would maybe clump together well um, with mascara because they kind of are sewn in in clumps already. So let me get my lash glue, I'll put it on my eyes, and then we will do the lashes together. All right, we are back. I've put on a line of li uh, liquid glue on my lash line. I washed my hands. 
Um, I'm all set to shove these lashes onto my eyeballs. They look so promising. I am going to just trim off the little glue on the edges because sometimes they have these like extra little gluey bits and I don't want those sticking in my eyes. And remember to trim off a little bit of lash at the very, very end to match the curve of your eye. My eyes are small, so I knew I had to cut off just a little bit. Sometimes I overshoot and I think my eyes are super tiny, but they end up being perfect. So pretty, right? These are super fluffy and natural and pretty. I love, I live. <sighs> I have chills. Um, I actually tried a pair of lashes from Ardell that were called extension effects lashes for monolids and hooded eyes. And I was like, uh, hello, Ardell. Did you make lashes just for me? And then I tried them on and I wanted to show them on camera, but the, the footage was not great. Um, I ended up scrapping it, but <laughs> spoiler alert, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> lash effects. It was kind of tragic. So this is kind of my, um, my comeback for that. I'm super happy because guys, do we see this? Does this not look like a J.Curl lash effect it does, right? I'm gonna go in with my volumizing mascara. This is the one from Essence. And I'm going to just zigzag through these to get them really nice and clumpy and spidery. I am ruining the fluffy elegance of these lashes by clumping them together. But I feel like that look, I don't know, editorial, very cool, very 2020, at least from what I've seen on the makeup blogs these days. Totally not what this company was going for when they made these lashes, but I kind of like how spidery they look. Especially those inner bits, they're really PC, and I think that is a la Gucci's mascara, right? My best brownie lip is this Primark Luster $1 lipstick in the shade Velvet Touch. All right, this is just about as brownie nude as I have in my collection. I don't really have that many brownie nudes, unfortunately. Let me zhuzh up my hair, make it really big and like poofy aesthetic. I can't really get my hair that big. Mmm, that dry shampoo smells really, really nice. Okay, so this is the final look. Did I nail it? Is it closer than the one I put on Instagram yesterday? Um, Oh god, this is just such a dream come true. Thank you, Hannah, once again for brightening my day, making my year, making 2020 incredible. Um, you are the best, and this has been just the most wonderful gift. I appreciate you so, so, so much, and of course, you, I don't know, went out of your way to do this for me, and I really, really love it. I will, of course, be doing a follow-up on all these items, um, just to see, like, how they work in my shop, my stash routine, like, bringing everything in, is it stuff that I love, can I use anything up? Um, I still haven't had enough stuff to do an empties video, but if they make it to the empties, you will hear me talk about them more then, if not at a sooner time for an update. And with that, guys, I don't think I have anything else to say besides I love you guys so much for joining. Um, I hope this was close enough cropped in that you could see my makeup. I know lots of folks were asking for more up close shots, so hopefully this was a good enough look. Um, I love you guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are interested in makeup and makeup adjacent commentary. That was what I said, right? Makeup and makeup adjacent commentary. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on Sunday. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you will join our family. Thank you. I love you guys, and I will see you very soon. Bye!